Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Tea Time Tales, the home of cozy, bite-sized short stories, perfect for listening on your break, before going to sleep, or even while you're just enjoying a fresh cup of tea. On today's episode, we're going to meet the mysterious shopkeeper of Sherwood's Tea Shop, who seems to always just arrive right when someone needs him. So get your tea, settle in, and let's begin. On the main street, people hurried up and down the sidewalk while cars honked and drove by on the road. While everyone was rushing this way and that, a man stood in the middle of the pavement, staring bewildered at the buildings around him. People knocked into his shoulders as they hurried past him, letting out frustrated remarks as they did so. The man, however, ignored them all. Instead, he simply continued to look around him, lost in a daze. It was just here. Where had it gone, he thought. He had been there just yesterday. It couldn't have just disappeared, could it? The Teenager A narrow, small building sat uncomfortably wedged in between the two larger buildings by its sides. The exterior of the house was wooden and visibly worn from the ages. It had one large window beside the wooden door and an old tattered red and white striped awning hung precariously above the door. On the large dusty window, in considerable hand-painted letters, were the words Sherwood's Tea Shop with two seemingly unnecessary P's and an E at the end. The strange shop sat there, as if in waiting. Meanwhile, everyone else on the street was hastily passing by without even a second glance. Well, everyone, except one. Amidst the crowd trudged a young teenager in blue sweats and a snotty hoodie. She walked with her headphones on, disinterested in the world around her. That was until the lettering of the tea shop caught her eye, and she stopped to ponder her next move. She could, in all honesty, just ignore the strange, ill-fitting building and keep aimlessly wandering the streets in an attempt to get some fresh air, as her friend Christina suggested. Or she could go inside and see if there was anything that could distract her mind. Tea was meant to soothe the soul, after all. Or so Christina would say. As she stepped inside, she almost immediately bumped it to the counter. The door had left only just enough space for a patron to enter. The worn counter had only a small bell on it with a sign that read, Please ring if Till is unattended. After she precariously rang the bell, her attention turned to the scene behind the counter. Rows and rows, high up even further than she could have sworn the building's own height stood, shelves of various jars, boxes, and compartments of tea. Just as she was about to leave, assuming that this was nothing more than a waste of time, a man suddenly appeared behind the counter. He wore old, timely robes and smelled heavily of peppermint. He stood behind the counter with violet eyes that seemed to stare straight through her. What ails you? he asked in a simple, monotone voice. No hello, no good morning, no nothing, just what ails her? What kind of man was this? Excuse me? she asked. What ails you? What burden are you carrying with you? Uh, I, um... The teenager searched her mind. Where was she to even begin? There was plenty that she was carrying around with her, but she wasn't going to tell all that to a complete stranger about how her boyfriend decided to ring in their one-year anniversary by admitting that he had cheated on her and was leaving her for someone else, about how only her best friend Christina knew because she had been too ashamed to tell any of her other friends, but she told Christina everything, or how ever since then, when she wasn't at school, she was laying in her bed, hugging her childhood stuffed animal and wondering at what point the heartache would leave her company and would she ever be able to trust a guy again. Her thoughts continued to spiral, and she began to wonder why she had decided to leave the house anyways when... Oh, suddenly it dawned on the teenager that she had been standing there for almost five minutes, completely spiraling down her own thoughts, while the mysterious man simply stood and watched her with his piercing eyes, patiently waiting for an answer. 
uh, I, uh, um, the teenagers tried to start, but instead the man held up his hand that showed early signs of aging, and the teenager immediately stopped trying to stutter out an answer. The man walked away from the counter to the back of the shelves where the teenager could see nothing. She could only hear the clinking of jars as the man clearly looked to find something. Within moments, he returned and set down a small blue jar of tea on the counter. The teenager read the label, To Heal a Broken Heart. The teenager's mouth stood agape. What? How did you know? she asked. The man, instead of answering her question, simply said, One spoonful in your cup every night before bed, until it is no longer required. With that, he left the counter, and though the teenager waited patiently, he did not return. Bewildered, she took the tea awkwardly and left some coins on the counter, feeling too bad to accept the strange gift for free. The Man A few days later, the bell above the door made a soft ting sound as the man stumbled in. It was never his intention to go inside a tea shop. He was merely trying to find a place to finish his business call without everyone on the street bumping into him. When he realized where he was, he immediately hung up his phone. The smell. The smell was the first thing to hit him. An ungodly mixture of various scents of tea and... Peppermint? The second was the presence of the man behind the counter who merely stood, watching him with his piercing velvet eyes, not saying anything. He was unnerving, and was was that a feather earring? What is this kind of place? Some kind of weird costume shop? What, is this one of those cosplay places or something? He bit at the man. The man behind the counter said nothing. Instead, he stood and continued to watch. Well, this only riled up the man even more, who at this point seemed to almost be sweating through his suit as he began his rant. Really? You're not even going to answer me? Well, that's just great. That's that's really great. You know, you're just what I needed today. Some bogus freak of a shopkeeper who is apparently too rude to even talk to his customers. How do you expect to make any money? Especially when your sore is the size of a shoe closet. And what did that sign say in your window? You sell tea? Yeah, good luck with that one. You're going to make a real good buck not talking to anyone, especially about tea. God, why is everyone so incompetent? If it's not people at my work, it's the people at the garage taking far too long to fix my car, or the plumbing at home that decides to break again, and of course our babysitter cancelled again because why wouldn't she? So selfish. And my boss keeps adding more work to my plate because apparently that's the things I get for being good at my job. And now this? I'm late for work? People apparently can't watch where they're going? And then I end up in this smelly closet of a shop? Oh. Finally, when the man finished his tirade, the man behind the counter slowly turned around and inspected the rows and rows of tea boxes behind him. Have you ever tried tea? Yes, finally. The man stood completely bewildered. It was not exactly the reaction he was expecting after having just vented out his frustrations to a complete stranger, while also insulting his establishment. What? Tea? (sighs) No. No, I can't say that I have, he answered, his rage finally simmering down. While it always helped to let it out, he knew as well as anyone that taking it out on strangers was never going to help anything. Finally, the shopkeeper turned around, holding a small jar of tea. The dried leaves inside resembled the colors of the sun, a mixture of red, orange, and yellow. The man looked up at the shopkeeper, clearly confused, but the jar of tea was handed to him. Drink one cup every morning until it is no longer required. He began to walk away from the counter as the man held the jar of tea in his hands when he called after him. Wait, how much do I have to pay you? No charge, the man responded plainly and disappeared from within the shelves of the tea shop. After a few moments, the businessman stepped back out onto the street, still looking at the jar of tea in his hand. When he looked back up and turned around with the intention of going back into the shop and asking just what all that was about, He was stunned to find that the tea shop had vanished. Instead, a completely normal apartment building stood in front of him instead. What? He whispered to himself. The Dog On a sunny spring day a few weeks later, 
The man behind the counter was polishing some empty tea jars, and the bell above the door tinged. However, initially when he looked up, he did not see a new patron. He did, on the other hand, hear the sound of panting. He peered over the edge of the counter to find Cocker Spaniel staring at him, her tongue hanging out of her mouth as she panted. The dog, seeing the man, immediately hopped onto its hind paws and rested its front paws on the counter for balance. The dog began barking at the shopkeeper. Then she pushed herself away from the counter and paced around in circles as she continued to bark. All the while, the man watched her intently. She was clearly quite agitated. When the dog had finished its barking, it sat down on its bottom and looked at the man as she waited patiently. Yes, well, it's all very clear to me, said the man as he began to rummage around for what he was looking for. Except this time, he did not search on his tea shelves. Instead, he searched on the shelves just underneath the counter. After a few moments, as the dog continued to wait patiently, the man stood back up and held out a small, bone-shaped biscuit to the dog. Here, this should help you find your owner in no time, he said as the dog took the treat from his hand and crunched it up immediately. The man walked around the counter and held the door open for the dog. Before the dog left, it leapt up and gave a slobbery lick to the shopkeeper. Yes, yes, the man said. You're welcome. Now, off you go. They'll be worried about you, you know. He let his face form into a rare smile as he watched the dog run down the sidewalk happily. The Shopkeeper Somewhere deep in the back rooms of his tea shop, the man sat at a wooden table full of trinkets and papers and spilled tea and empty jars. A single candle burned at the table and produced his only source of light. A small crow was perched on top of a faux golden branch, watching the man as he wrote in a big black book where he kept stock of his inventory. Well, Crowy, it's certainly been a successful few months, he said, and looked up from his book at the crow, who was listening very carefully. The teenager has finally gotten over her heartbreak and is out and about with her friends once more. The businessman has started going to therapy for his anger management issues, and from what I can tell, his wife couldn't be happier. And the dog was rearranged with his owner, who has thankfully since purchased what I understand to be a collar that is able to track the dog's whereabouts. Who knew humanity could come up with such stupendous inventions? Crowey cawed in agreement and happily flapped his wings. Just then, the shopkeeper felt the tea shop settle, with the wooden walls creaking loudly as it settled into place. Ah, the shopkeeper says. It seems we've arrived somewhere. Come, Crowey, let's go see who needs our help this time. He set his pen down and made his way to the front of the tea shop once more. And that was the tale of the wandering tea shop. Hmm. I would certainly like it if the tea shop like that showed up near me, wouldn't you? Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of Tea Time Tales. I look forward to seeing you again here next time.